<laughs> What's up everybody? I'm Alex. I'm Ryan. And I just got back from Cadillac Attack at Orlando Speedway. It's pretty much the who's who of Cadillac stuff uh, at that event. You know, all the fast guys, all the big vendors, uh, all the big names in the industry are there. And uh, I think the guys uh, and girls had a great time, uh, hated uh, myself and my family couldn't make it. I mean, we would love to have been in Orlando because we had completely polar opposite air here. Yep. <laughs> Emphasis on polar. Ryan stayed at home and did all the tuning and stuff for us, so we're going to have him talk through all of that goodness. But yeah. Overall. It was pretty good. It was a pretty good outing. You know, it's sometimes challenging being in a, so far apart with some of the stuff and offering support. A lot of times at the track, it requires kind of having eyes and ears on that stuff. So you guys did a good job with videos and uh, kind of let me know what was going on with the car for things I couldn't see on the log, obviously. It was very helpful and, and, and helping dial the car back to the track conditions we had to work with to eventually, you know, get the car down the track. So I think you guys showed up and started testing, what, Thursday? Yeah. So where are we, TJ? We're in Florida. Cadillac attack, Orlando. supposed to start Thursday at 12. They got like four cars down the track and then it was an all down. Yeah. So then I don't think we ran our test and tune pass until two o'clock on yeah. Thursday. Yeah, I think it was one or two test passes Thursday and mm -hmm. I think uh, it may we may have even both struck out on both of those and spun on both passes. <laughs> I think she spun uh, on the other pass too. <laughs> then we realized, you know, we basically went out on our tune up that we had in the car back in the fall and our local tracks are typically you know, fantastic about radial prep. So we went down there and thought, well, we'll try to swing and, you know, hopefully the track will take it, but it just wasn't the case for whatever reason, but whether it be the old downs or whatever, different different track, different time of year, but we had to tune to the surface ultimately, so. And we've been tuning Leslie's car in the cold and we get down there and it's 85 degrees, which yeah. the DA, I think they said was past 2000. Yeah, it got up over right 2000, there. I think, and you know, one thing to consider with not just density altitude is uh, also the water grains. I think it was pretty humid down there. The water grains were over 100, you know, 106 to 110 water grains. So, I mean, obviously not record air, anywhere near about personal best air, but we had some good tune-ups to work off of and, and kind of start from. And, uh, you know, so once I once we got some data, you know, she, she spun on that first log that she sent me and I was like, I identified kind of where it spun. It kind of rolled off the line a little bit and mm -hmm. then it spun, which mm -hmm. is kind of what the car does every time it has an issue, it rolls. <laughs> and then when the converter starts to couple, uh, actually you can see on the RPM traces here on these screenshots, when the converter lays over and starts to couple, that's where the car spins. Uh, if the track is not on point and... <laughs> It's just a lot of car, heavy car to get moving and you know the suspension is challenging on a heavy car and you know that's where we always battle it. So I said okay, well we're going to take some power out of the car and that's essentially what I did. I, uh, I took some power out basically from the launch all the way up to just under 6,000 RPMs. I pulled like five degrees of timing out which on that car that's 
150 horsepower probably. I wish you could have seen how upset they were when you said, I pulled out five degrees of timing and everybody's like whole face just sucked. Yeah, they're like, no, <laughs> no, don't pull the timing out. But it, it worked, you know, and you know, it got the car to make a clean pass. We finally made a clean pass, kind of. Uh, she ran it out. I wanted to run it out past the eight just to see what the air fuel ratio looked like before we sent it on a full quarter mile pass. And just before she got off the throttle, I thought, man, it looked like it dropped boost. I think we may have got a blower belt. I told Larry, I was like, dude, check the belts. Because right before she lifted, unless it's just a, a glitch with the log or something, the map KPA dropped and we lost boost. Hey, Larry, stop. That belt. That belt. That's flat spot belt. Look down in there. See how it's all flat? Oh, so there's yeah. no ribs. Hey, your cog belt's cooked. See that? Oh, wow. That's so here's what happened. Shuts it off, it doesn't break anything, but it fucking annihilates that. Eventually found out it lost the blower belt. It tricked everyone. I think, didn't you say the belt was still on, but all the cogs were? Yeah, so it was just slipping. Like it wouldn't fall off the side. It wasn't falling front or back, but yeah. it was just going. So like you would start it up and there's a video of it and it's just whistling yeah. and it would like clap and then it would whistle. And we're all like, <laughs> what is that? Yeah. So Yeah, so basically the cog belt on the jack shaft on the back of the blower, it just ripped all the teeth off of it and the outside of the belt looked perfectly fine. So, you know, until you actually go back there and physically took it off and checked it out, it looked like it was fine. But uh, also on that pass, we noticed the manifold air temps, the charge temps were really high. And this thing has an ice tank in the trunk. And I think um, that evening, Friday, I think, or maybe this was Thursday evening, I don't know, the days kind of ran together. <laughs> yeah. It was kind of a three day deal. But uh, I, th I think you said that they replaced the uh, replaced the intercooler pump mm -hmm. and had to put a blower belt on it as well. Yeah. So shout out TJ and Larry for getting that done at the track because when we found all this out, the sun had already gone down. Yeah. And they had a concert going. So we went and watched the little concert. So then it was pitch black, and we were like, <laughs> "Have fun." Yeah. So. That was that was good. Finally, we we at least got some data, and I kind of identified. Okay, well the car it looked a little lean on that run, but the manifold air temps were over 200 degrees. So I just as a precaution, I added some fuel to it, and uh, then basically fast forward to her her next pass, her next clean pass, I should say. It worked out great. <laughs> obviously on no timing. Uh, so 60 foot was almost a tenth off from where it's normally at. You know, obviously I'm not gonna tell what any times from the car, mm -hmm. but it was off uh, basically a full tenth at the 60 foot. And, uh, but hey, it made the trip and went down through there. But since the intake air temps were a hundred degrees cooler now because the intercooler pump was functioning properly, um, the air fuel ratio was rich. So the fuel I put in was actually unnecessarily added. So, I took that fuel back out.
And that's kind of where we ended uh, day two. I think that was first round. No, that was the, her last qualifier pass, actually, where we did that. And she had one more pass that night, and it was uh, first round eliminations. And I think she, she got had a, a bye. Yeah, she had a bye run. She had a bye run, which, like, thank the heavens. Uh, yeah, because guess what? We still had the timing out of the car. And we knocked the tires off. We spun. Bad. And it sounded bad. Like, yeah. when you listen to the video, there's a huge pop. Like, yeah. pop. And then she just kind of slows down. Yeah. So what happens, you know, that thing tears loose and, you know, so violently runs up to the rev limiter. And if you don't, if you can't catch it in time, uh, you know, it hits the fuel shut off and it loads up on fuel and it pops back through the exhaust. And yeah, it's a whole thing. So. She spun, but she had a competition by essentially, so it was a free swing. But I think they had had an oil down at the track shortly before she made that pass, and it was later on that evening, and the track, I think, had gone away a little bit. That tune revision that Ryan sent us was killer. It was a bit too spicy. Blew the tires off immediately. Might have had a little bit to do with the track kind of going away, but all in all, I mean, it is okay. It's getting kind of late. They've uh, had several, several oil downs. point two we were supposed to finish blower king on friday like we were supposed to have two qualifier two three elimination and then run into finals and they ended up calling it at 10 o'clock i yeah. think it was because somebody had old down the whole quarter mile so again 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 yeah. so they canceled testing tune for the next day which was super nice we could just jump straight into uh, eliminations <laughs> There's no, sometimes you just can't, but like the hot and left, I'm going to finish 6th Street, I'm going to go with 6th Street, and then on standby, so we're here. I don't know where it was from or whatever, but the, mm -hmm. the ZL1, you know, I, I just said, hey, you know, I mean, they're probably close enough together that if, you know, he makes a clean pass, I didn't want to lose because we, we, we took too much power out. So I said, heck it, we'll just, we'll try it. And the car made the best pass. Really, it's made all weekend long. <laughs> taking that uh, three or four percent of fuel back out of it and the car picked up like four miles an hour in the quarter so from where it was at on that one tune change so we're like man we're sitting good and you know and there was one car in the class i think jake's car uh that mm -hmm. was head and shoulders above everybody else the blue car, yeah. yeah yeah so mm -hmm. it, we we knew we weren't gonna you know be able to mess with that car You know, I made another tune and I said I put a half a degree of timing back in it just in case the track is good because we were going into the semis. We, we they were down it was the, the middle cars. of the day at that point. Right. It was nice and warm. There's another oil down. We'd all been sitting now. <laughs> yeah. Like, we were hoping. Yeah. So I said, here, here's another tune. Depends on what the track's doing. You know, load it if you want to. If you don't feel like it, the track will take it. Let's just stay on what we know has worked. You know, so we did. They didn't flash the tune, but ended up spinning anyways and lost to a car that was 
you know, ultimately not as fast, but that's drag racing, you know, that's part of the deal. So we got out of the final four cars and ultimately it was a, um, a very challenging weekend. A good, uh, a victorious in many ways to be able to work through so many issues and make some successful passes. Just uh, challenging and kind of makes you want to beat your head against the wall sometimes messing with some of this stuff. But, you know, that's part of the game. So. That's racing. Uh, yeah, but it was good to work remotely and, and help get that thing dialed in and get some passes under our belt 2024 getting started, you know, off hopefully on the right foot. So. Yes, for sure. And uh, we got to see a bunch of GPI pe people there. Yeah. So Carlitos Macias was there and talk about having a crazy weekend. We fought with our belts and our tunes and everything. Yeah. And he went out at one point and I was filming his uh, burnout and his pulley just like rolls out from under yeah. his car. And so I'm like, oh, okay, we push his car back, they shut everything down. He comes back like 15 minutes later, ready to go another ready lap. To go. And then he made it all through the weekend. He was running like six classes, I believe. It was ridiculous. And just going yeah. and going and going, putting work in on that car. And uh, yeah. eventually uh, he ended up blowing an axle. Yeah, broken axle. Uh, he's a manual, manual transmission car he too. He is, he was in the stick class and I was yeah. like, no way. Yeah, so, I mean, he had his work cut out for him. I mean, it's hard to, Manual fits you in cars are, uh, they're a handful to, to get to work and be really durable, you know, without putting a lot of money in the drive line. So hats off to him. He's been a long time customer, a uh, very good supporter of our company. And, you know, we appreciate him going out there and flying our flag as well. He sure did his thing. I think he ran some pretty good numbers with the car. And, uh, you know, he's just now as well getting some passes under his belt with the car. He'll only continue to get better from there. So, and uh, he's actually semi-local to the track down there. I think he's from Miami. Yeah, he was like, oh, this is a three hour drive as we had pulled up from our 18 hour drive. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah, so uh, overall, I would I would say it was a success. You know, we just, we've got, what's our next event probably? It's probably April. Yeah. Um, We'll probably have some track rentals prior to that, but yeah, it's a good kickoff to the season. Can't wait for, you know, see what the, the season holds for us. You know, it should be a fun one for sure. So if you want to be a part of Team GPI. You better come on with it. We're ready to build it. We got the new shirts. We got the new shirts. So Hold on. On the cams. Gapping, gapping people intentionally. And uh, yeah, that's what it's all about. Go out there to have fun this year, doing what we love, and uh, helping people go fast. So join the team, hit us up. And uh, we'll get you in. We'll try to get you flipped as soon as possible. And we're happy to have you. Make sure you like, subscribe, comment. We'll see you later. See ya.